Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Logic. In this video, you will learn how to translate ordinary language into categorical propositions. So if your friends want to argue for something and you want to evaluate the argument, you can translate the ordinary language into categorical form and then test it. Now to put your friend's propositions into standard form, you need to reconstruct them so they have a quantifier, a subject term, copula, and predicate term. The subject term and predicate terms must include a plural noun or pronoun that refers to the respective class. For example, the proposition some apples are green has no noun in the predicate term. The word green refers to an attribute, not a class. So we need a noun to refer to the predicate class. Now to translate this proposition, we enter a noun into the predicate. Now for example, we will enter the word fruit. All right, now let's practice this skill. What is the correct translation here? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! You must insert the word plants into the predicate. Next practice problem. Select the correct translation. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! You must insert the word people into the predicate. Very good job. Let's continue. The next case concerns categorical propositions that are missing standard copulas. For example, in the proposition some police officers will get injured, the word will is not a proper copula. We need to reword this proposition to read, some police officers are persons who will get injured. Now it has a proper copula and a plural noun in the predicate. Here's another example. We can translate this proposition to read, some bears are animals that hibernate during the winter. Now the proposition has a quantifier, a subject term that contains a plural noun, a proper copula, and a predicate term that contains a plural noun. Let's now work a practice problem. What's the correct translation here? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! R is inserted for the copula and animals inserted for the predicate. Very good. Let's continue. The next topic is about singular propositions, which are propositions that are about a specific person, place, time, or thing. The proposition, Susan went to work, is a singular proposition, which is missing a proper quantifier, subject term, copula, and predicate term. To insert a plural noun into the subject term, we use what is called a parameter. For the parameter, we will use persons identical to and combine it with the quantifier all. The expression persons identical to Susan is just another way of saying Susan. There's really only one person who's identical to Susan, and that person is Susan herself. But this parameter allows us to enter the plural noun persons into the subject. And now we can fix the copula and predicate term as we've done before. We enter R for the copula and persons who for the predicate. Here's another example. For this proposition, we use the same parameter as before, combined with the quantifier no. Then we finish the translation by fixing the copula and predicate term. Practice. What is the correct translation? Now press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Here's a proper quantifier, subject, copula, and predicate term. Next practice problem. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! This has the correct quantifier and copula. Great job on those practice problems. The next topic is that of adverbs and pronouns. Words like where, when, and always are adverbs, and words such as who and what are pronouns. 
These words are translated in terms of places, times, persons, and things. Here's an example. Since always is a temporal adverb, we use times to translate it using times. Now here's an example. And here's another example. In this next example, an adverb appears in the middle of the statement. Now to prevent confusing the subject term with the predicate term, move the adverb and everything that goes with it to the front. Now we use places to translate the adverb. Don't confuse the subject term with the predicate term or you'll be committing the fallacy of illicit conversion. This next example has a pronoun in the middle of the statement. First, move the pronoun to the front and then translate the statement. Let's practice. What is the correct translation here? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! Here's the correct quantifier, subject term, copula, and predicate term. Next practice problem. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This translation has all the correct components. Next practice problem. What is the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This is the correct translation. Next practice problem. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This is the correct translation. Next practice problem. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This is the correct translation. Now the next topic is that of unexpressed quantifiers. The meaning of the statement will dictate which quantifier you should use. Here's an example. Now the meaning is that every pearl is round. So the quantifier is all. And here's another example. The meaning of this statement is not that every snake is in the jungle, but simply that at least one snake is in the jungle. So the quantifier is to be some. Here's another example. The meaning of this statement is that every cat is a mammal. So the quantifier is all. Here's another example. The meaning is not that every dog has barked, but simply one dog has barked. So the quantifier is some. Let's work a practice problem. What is the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! That's right. The correct quantifier is the word some. Next practice problem. What is the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! The correct quantifier is all. Next practice problem. What is the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This is the correct translation. Now the next topic is for statements that do not have a proper quantifier. For example, in the statement, a few politicians are villains, the phrase a few is a quantifier but it is not a standard quantifier. A few means some, so the correct translation would be some politicians are villains. Now here's another example. Few does not mean the same thing as a few. Few means some did and some did not. So two categorical propositions are needed to translate this statement. Here's another example. Not every means some are not. So the correct translation is some voters are not Republicans. Let's work some practice problems. What is the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! Not all means some are not. Next practice problem. What is the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! Few means some are and some are not. 
Next practice problem. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This is the correct translation. All right, the next topic has to do with conditional statements. How many conditional statements can be translated into categorical propositions? For example, the statement, if it's a cat, then it's a mammal. Conditional statements are translated using universal quantifiers. The antecedent of the conditional statement always relates to the subject of the categorical proposition, and the consequent relates to the predicate. Now here's another example. Again, a universal quantifier is used. It's used to translate this statement. Now, with conditional statements having negative antecedents and consequence, the transposition rule can assist in translation. The transposition rule is similar to contraposition for categorical proposition. It states that negations can be deleted if both antecedent and consequent switch places. So if not A, then not B becomes if B, then A. Let's apply the transposition rule to this statement. If it's not a mammal, then it's not a cat. Becomes if it's a cat, then it's a mammal. We can then translate this statement to all cats are mammals. Now, in some conditional statements, the consequent appears first, followed by the antecedent. In these statements, the order should be changed so the statement begins with the word if, and then it can be correctly translated to the correct translation. Now, let's work some practice problems. What's the correct translation here? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This is the correct translation. Next practice problem. What is the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! The word not in the conditional statement requires the word no. Next practice problem. What is the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This is the correct translation. Great job. Now, statements containing the word unless can be changed into conditional statements. Unless means if not. For example, we first change the word unless to if not, which means this. And now it can be correctly translated to this. Let's work some practice problems. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This is the correct translation. Next practice problem. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This is the correct translation. Now the next topic is about exclusion propositions. Now these are propositions that involve the word only, none but, none except, and no except. And when a statement begins with one of these words, then the terms must be switched in the translation. For example, this statement is translated into this statement. Here's another example. This statement is translated into this statement. When only and none but occur in the middle of the statement, the entire component should be moved to the beginning, and then the statement can be translated. For example, this statement can be changed to this statement, and then it can be correctly translated to this. Now let's work some practice problems. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! The word only at the beginning requires the terms to be switched. Next practice problem. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! This is the correct translation. Next practice problem. What's the correct translation? 
Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! This is the correct translation. Good job. Now the next topic deals with the words the only. The only is not the same as only. The only means all. For example, this statement is translated into this statement. When the only is in the middle of a sentence, the entire phrase should be moved to the beginning. For example, this statement means this, which can be properly translated into this. Let's work some practice problems. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Correct. The only is simply replaced with all. Next practice problem. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! This is the correct translation. The next topic is about acceptive propositions. Now, acceptive propositions are statements that have the phrases all except and all but. Now, these statements require two categorical propositions for their translation. For example, this statement is correctly translated into this statement. All right, let's practice. What is the correct translation here? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! This is the correct translation. All right, next practice problem. What's the correct translation? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! This is the correct translation. Great job on those practice problems. Now, for translating ordinary language into categorical proposition, here's a cheat sheet. If you see any of these words, they can be translated this way. Very good job on completing this level. And congratulations, you have now officially earned your blue belt in logic. Woo woo woo! All right, now to help me, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And have a great day.